Father, as that you rejoice over your congregations everywhere, mm, everywhere, the ones for which you pay the price, may we not bring you sorrow. May we be a church that gives you joy. Mm, may we give you joy. Find joy in us. Thank you. Amen. May the Lord give you eyes, ears, and hear. Uh, a heart that perceives all right. May our speech be found pleasing to the Lord. Thank you. Amen. You're welcome to this Sunday morning of opportunity. I apologize to those who came for the second meeting for keeping you. God will help us not to keep you much again or at all. We, I may presume, may And we'll see a few things that the Holy Spirit would like for us to consider in our walk with the Lord. There is a walk. There is a plan. There's an intention the Lord has. His intentions are good, not evil. What we struggle with is his method. The Lord has a plan. The Lord is going somewhere with everyone on earth. The Lord is going somewhere. The Lord has an intention. Some do not know that the Lord has an intention. They almost seem to think that things are just running on the earth and the Lord is the Lord is just following us around in this troublesome world, catching us. That's not what's happening. The Lord, the Lord didn't say, all right, you guys do what you like. I'll face my side. Then once in a while, if there's a problem, shout my name. That, that's not what is happening here. The heavens rule. The most high rules. He has his plans. He has his intentions. He's pursuing something. He's bringing about his will. bring about his will. Constantly he is pursuing some goal. He has goals. The Lord has goals. He's pursuing. Unfortunately, the process of achieving that goal can be painful. Some of the goals. But everyone on earth understands this. In every area. The student understands that they lose sleep. They undergo stress. What's the goal? A degree. A national diploma. A higher national diploma. A BSc or a BA. A, an MA. A PhD. An LLB. An MD. THD. Anything. We understand that there's a price. Before you have that thing appended to your name. There will be difficulty. And as the Lord knows that we are willing to pay prices for many of the things that we pursue, he can see that all human beings comprehend the concept that difficulty precedes enjoyment. 
School is almost easy compared to starting a business. Many people want to succeed in business as an entrepreneur. And they don't succeed and they say, well, this is not for everybody. Well, you may be telling the truth. Not everyone is to sell. Because if everyone is selling, nobody will buy. But the truth is, many of the people that stopped selling were supposed to sell. You're supposed to do a business. But you're too lazy to see it through. Because it's hard. What stopped you was that it's hard. You heard about how people were profiting. They told you stories about how they're doing this and they're making this money. Some of them oftentimes forget to tell you what they went through before they succeeded. And I'm not talking about dishonest money, unrighteous money, or blood money. Talk about honest money achieved from hard work. They forgot to tell you that they will sit up till 2 a.m. Who has a family? Who is from a family that does business? They sell things and you've seen the process of sitting down to meet an order and maybe you're, even if you're just putting the stickers on the thing. Who has ever been in a situation? No, I'm asking two different things. Who has ever been in a situation where you had to meet a deadline? They ordered 200 packs of that thing or 500 or 100 and he kept you awake till 3 a.m. trying to have it ready. Let me see your hand. Thank you. A number of hands. How many of you are from a family where that's normal? You meet, you grew up seeing it's a big entrepreneurial family. Let me see your hand. Raise your hand properly if you're raising. You see those hands? So if you are from a family that, so you've seen that repeatedly. It's not once. It's, some of us had the opportunity once or twice or thrice. There's something that happened. But some of you, the ones I talked about families, it's normal. That's where the school fees come from. That's where all of that. And everyone can come out and say, oh, yeah, you're, you're doing so well. Oh, the business is doing so well. But there's this constant work behind the scenes. Before you walk into a place and say, this place is nice. Wow, oh, how much is this? And you say, oh, that one is 4,800. The bigger one is 7,000. It's better to buy the bigger one. It's double, but it's cheap, cheaper. That process of creating that thing for sale, some liquid things, some hard things, some whatever it is, repackaging, breaking into small groups, sealing, whatever it is you do, is work. And people sit up till 1 a.m. Two, people travel at risk to life and limb and go all the way to another state. They are on the road. You know there might be robbers. You know there might be accidents. They face that risk. And they come out with the result. You see them come for their cousin's wedding. Wearing nice clothes to match. Out of a shiny car. You say things like God has blessed you people. What exactly do you mean? I'm not saying God hasn't blessed them. I'm asking, what are you thinking when you say that? That they sat in the house, their money fell out of the roof. No, they stayed awake late in the night. For 13 years. 13. Then they bought that car. The first 10 years was for learning how to do the job well. It's some profit from the last three years that bought the car. You thought it was 10 years of, 13 years of saving. No, you didn't save anything. The first two years, you lost repeatedly. You got profit and ate it. It became food. It was a lot of struggle. There was that time you lived in an incompleted building with no window. There's all of that. Now, so you look and say, God is blessing you. I repeat, what do you mean? Another person sits down and says, this thing you guys do, is, so this is what you say, yes now. And you people have like five shops in this market from this. Say, yes, this is what I've been doing. You forgot to ask when they started. You're just a greedy 21st century human being. You live there, you go and tell your uncle, uncle just loan me 300,000. I'm telling you now, this man in the market, this man has five shops. He's a family that does it. They are selling this thing. I'm telling you. Maybe he forgot to tell you that he produces it before he sells it. 
or he didn't listen well that he had been doing it for 13 years. You see, there's profit in it. There's profit. When is there profit? Is it within the first three, two months or 13 years later or 10 years later? Or maybe young will be faster. Maybe seven years later. You want profit. No, the first time will be survival. It will just be surviving. And someone is saying, no, God forbid. Man will take off with a bang. That's in every area of life. Where, that's why someone says, let me go and become a pastor, a preacher. After all, look at this one. They are doing well. Now look at what they are doing. Look at how they are. Look at now. They are able to do this and do that. No, ah, no, no. I'm telling you, there's money in pastoring. You see, you see, there's a big world full of human beings. Go and lead them to Christ and uh -huh, no problem, go. But can I come first? You will not do certain things for the first uh, maybe 10 years. Ah, oh. uh, why are you saying that? Because if this is your calling and so on, so you likely will not have enough to do that, except God wishes it, really. But if you're going with Oh, I saw this person doing well in ministry. This person, ah, I'm even more gifted than him now. I'm telling you, for every two visions he sees, I saw ten. That Rema he sees from the Bible, I already saw it. Haba, in that same verse, I saw six more. Should I let you know? No, off they go. How did those people get to gather around and listen? What labor? How long did he labor? Well, first and foremost, he got born again around 1995. When did you get saved? Uh, two years ago. Okay, good. He got born again in 1995. Two. He started preaching consistently in the year 2000. When did you start? Well, it's just last month that God said I should give all my time. Okay. All right, good. Since you've made the mistake of comparing yourself, can you do the math? Calculate from 1995 to now. Do this. How many years is that? Uh, that's 20. Uh, good. So, even if God says you will be half that time, that will still be something in the range of almost 12 years. You just started now. No, you don't understand the unction of me. Now, you're going to resort to fraud. Next thing, you're going to come up with gimmicks. You're going to build a house of cards and think that it's your personal charisma that will draw the people God has called you to feed. You try to use personal charisma. The problem is with building anything on top of your personal charisma is that it can only go as deep and be as strong as you. And how strong are you? Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church. This Petra. Christ is the rock which follows them. That's what he builds his church on. And here you are building, attempting to build the church of Christ on you. On your carriage, on your dressing. That's why you take the little money you have to buy a green suit. A, 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 a green and red suit. Stripes. That you look like uh, uh, Michael Jackson. He's on down. He's on down. That's, that's how you think. That's what you do with money specifically. That's how your mind processes. I wore a pair of green trousers the other day and a gray suit. So you don't say I'm a hypocrite, but I took the green trouser of my, what's this thing? Senator. Huh? I took the green trouser of my senator and wore with a white shirt and put on a gray jacket and brought out a green tie and people were sitting and jealous. Be there now. You want to look, I told you I went into a, 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 a shop years ago and I wanted a blue suit. Navy blue, of course, what I was saying. And the, this man showed me a shiny electric blue How do I explain electric blue? Who knows electric blue? Who knows? Who knows color? <sighs> Some that is that if you touch, you shock you. I asked him, 
Who wear who wear this kind of thing? He laughed. Ah, you know, to be ignorant like me is a problem. He laughed because in my mind, I said this was for musicians now on TV. He said, "No, that thing within one two days, a pastor will pick it." I went, "Oh." Because it's not a jacket it should wear to walk. You can't wait to walk. You can't wait. So what would they buy it for? You know all those kinds of jackets people wear on their wedding day? That you can't really wear around. But people wear everything. So it's okay. Don't mind me. I'm staid and all that. But the point is, here you are starting ministry, focusing on appearance. Trying to build, you thought, you watched, hey God, you watch whatever you watch and you thought that it's how, when you come and say, praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. And you learn mannerisms and you said that if, <laughs> an asthmatic attack disguised you thought too that that is what ministries, because you looked at that servant of God that you admire so much. You don't know that before anyone got to know him, he had been preaching for 15 years unknown. You didn't, you didn't know. You don't know. He had been pastoring for 12 years unknown. And then one big preacher had a conference and said, please come and preach. And he preached once. That's how he was known everywhere. That's T.D. Jakes I just told you about. You, you, you don't know. You think they're born with a, a massive multi-thousand crowd? No. No, no. They're faithfully slogging it out. Somewhere else. In a small congregation, sometimes 50 people, 70, 90, 120, 250. That's where they got to know the things they say. Then God said, all right, come here. All right, mm, stay here. There were uh, 300 around. Now I'm going to bring 3,000. After that, I'm going to bring 30,000. You came straight. You said, excuse me, Lord, I don't want to do all that uh, process. You know that thing. No. Let's just go. Let's start with the 30,000. And the Lord wonders, why would you? Isn't that fraudulent? It's against how God operates, his modus operandi. It's against it. Be faithful. It's not about the time only. You do know that, right? For the person who is hearing me and say, it's okay, I'll put in the time. I'll put in the time. So I should, you say I should wait 10 years. No, I didn't say anything of the sort. I'm not your boss. God should be your boss. And it's not about the time because there's someone, the time is passing and you're unfaithful. You're not studying the word. You're not preparing. Some people think you must be in full pastoral ministry before. You do anything else. And you are not correct. I was not in full pastoral ministry when God was preparing me. I was pastoring from university. I was caring for people. I was watching over souls. So if you look at when I started actually providing official, recognized oversight, inaugurated, we pray for you to take care of these people oversight. That would be 99,000. So that would be about 23 years ago. The difference is that in between, there were pauses. In between, there were pauses. But before that, three, four, five years, I already started attending God's school of the spirit. I was already taking notes at the feet of the Lord under the tutelage of the Holy Spirit from 1998, nine. 95, but well, I'd like to say when I heard the word of the Lord where he said in summary that he's going to pour out his rain, which the Bible, I got to know later, means teaching. He said, my teaching shall fall on you like the rain. But what I heard audibly, internally, if you've heard it, you know what I'm talking about, was 
I hear the sound of abundance of rain. I hear the sound of abundance of rain. Three times he said it as I got up that morning. The word of the Lord came to me. First time ever. And from that time, the word, the heavens were opened to me. And understanding came continually. And I became a student of the spirit. I began to learn. While I attended church, but my primary teacher was the Holy Spirit. I attended church and read books, lots of Christian books. That was my educational trajectory. Then in terms of practicing pastoral service, 99, 2000. From then on, one way or the other, but a little, two people, five people, ten people. If you're a fellowship leader, you have a clue. And all these people and all these responsibilities are coming and going. And when the time came, when time had passed, the Lord now said, all right, now I want you doing this much more. 2010, 11 years later. And, and this is the normal thing. And then 2016, I want you doing this only. So not part-time, full-time. God does these guys. And it might be different for someone else. He may drag you all at once. But make sure you're listening. Make sure you're hearing. Make sure you have understanding. Make sure you are obeying. As we began to do these things, as we continue to do these things, as we insisted on obeying these things, this is how God leads a human being. Why do most people not take that part? It's hard. How long am I going to do this? There's something in us that can endure something if you know it will finish exactly when it will finish. Yes? No? We know exactly when it will end. You know exactly when it will end. It's much easier. When you have no clue as to when it will end, that's where there's a problem. I don't know when this thing will stop. I don't know. I don't like this thing. But if they tell you, the exams are tough, but they tell you to end. How many of you have had that feeling of, oh God, I wish I had more time to read, but also, oh God, let this exam come and pass. Let me rest. This is the reality. We are able to endure better when we know when it will end. The challenge with God's matter is that you don't know when it will end. That's where you need faith. Because we don't know when it will end. Where are we going? How long will it last? Lord God, help us. We are going to have to fight. If we don't fight, we lose. If we are lazy, we lose. You want to be a successful businessman like that couple? Set yourself. Tell yourself, let's see how we'll be doing in 10 years' time. Don't say, see, as I'm putting this money into this business now, and traveling to Onisha to pick these things. Papa, December, I'm counting. You're a clown. Just that you didn't find the costume, but you're a clown. This, this, this world is full of these kinds of people. Oh, business, ideas, but you won't see it through. You're not willing to give up everything for it. What did you sell? What were you willing to give up for it? You tell, listen to me. One of the easiest ways of knowing someone will not succeed. Look if he has a business idea and comes to you to finance it, but could sell something he has to finance it and doesn't, but comes to you to finance it. In case you're here, uh, let me save you the trouble. The business will fail. How do I know? You don't believe in it and you're going to handle it. You don't believe in it. Ah, no, but I believe in it now. But I didn't believe. We have done this business plan to show you. No, you don't. Why do you say so? Because there you are. Look at your bed. Look at your, you have a bed frame. You have a music set. 
You have this thing. How much do you say you need? 300, sir. 300. Come, follow me. How much do you think this cupboard costs? Uh, about 80,000. I'll buy it. I'll buy 70. This flat screen, how much? Uh, no, I'm not selling. I just said how much? Well, I, I got it for 75. If I had to sell it, hmm, no, I'm not even selling because prices of things have gone up. I'll buy it 70. This bedstead, how much you buy? I don't understand. I want to buy my best set. No. I want to buy my mattress. Not buying your bed. I said the bedstead, the thing the mattress is on top of. How much does it cost? Hmm. Oh, it's up to 150. When I finish, I'll say, give me all these things. I'll pay for it. I'll buy it from you. That's how much? 322,000. Use that and start your business. No. I told you you were a clown without a costume. You want my money to go and lose so you can come and tell me you understand how things are. You clown. Any real businessman on earth knows is everything I've just said. Anyone that knows, I'm not a businessman, but I know. You won't risk your money. There's something you say in case I lose it. You want to lose my money. Have you heard of Iqbabasi? God's king. Have you heard of rumors of God's king? I won't discuss what he can do or does, but I'm just saying, be very careful. Be very, very careful. Every one of us has a choice in this life. And the clearest way of knowing someone that trusts in what either God has called to him, him to do or he has put his hand in is look at what he's willing to give up for it. I'm telling you the truth. Now, if you don't have the conviction that makes you willing to give up things for what you think God wants or what you're pursuing, that thing will fail, not because it wouldn't have succeeded, but when it is tested, it will not stand. And you will be tested. In this world, everything is tested. You drop a seed into the ground, it's tested. When it dies, then it resurrects. Almost everything people try to do in this world tries to die first. Almost every single thing we do in this world is assaulted. It's assaulted, attacked. And if it stands its ground, it may survive. People have faced situations where things ran towards. An animal or something. And the person stood his ground. Ah! And the thing turned back. There have been situations like that. There are all kinds of situations that have been averted by someone being bold. Or being willing to say, if I perish, I perish. And they didn't perish. But those who are not willing to face anything, do not find victory. I'd like us to look at the book of First Chronicles chapter 5. From verse 18. So, 22. And then, we will continue from 24. Well, we'll just continue all the way down to the last verse. I ask you to follow me carefully so that uh, you are not left behind. The Reubenites, the Gadites, the half tribe of Manasseh had 44,760 warriors, valiant men who carried the shield and sword, drew the bow, and were trained for battle. So let me say this as we are going at once. Valiant men. What makes them valiant men? Let me read this here. They could handle. NIV says, able-bodied men who could handle shield and sword. They could handle a shield. What's our shield? The shield of faith. What else could they handle? The sword. What's the sword? 
The sword of the spirit is the word of God. All this is Ephesians 6 for those who don't know their Bible well enough. Write down Ephesians 6 and go and read it from verse 10. Go and read. It tells you about the warfare in this world. Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10. You can read all the way down to 18. But it tells you about the weapons of our warfare. And it informs you that there is warfare. These able-bodied warriors, Israelite men, are pictures of Christians. Let me just be showing you the picture at once, what you're reading. These are Christians who had in their midst, they didn't only have warriors or able-bodied men. They had warriors, they had men, they had women. If you go to the book of Joshua, I've told you about the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. I've spoken about them significantly. They are the ones that got their inheritance before you crossed the Jordan. On this side of the Jordan was the inheritance. They kept, they built up the place. They conquered it, settled it, kept their wives and children and little ones and their herds, their animals. Then they marched ahead. They were the first that when the Jordan opened, they went ahead, 40,000 of them. They went ahead of the Israelites and they helped them conquer the land. They fought with their brethren. They conquered the land of Canaan. Then they got a lot of rewards and then they came back and went back to their own land. So they are the first leading company of people. They are a picture of the first fruit company. <laughs> Who first find victory? They are the ones, the whole group of them in the land of Canaan, none of them is a child. None of them is a woman because they drop their women and children and only warriors crossed into it. Now the rest had their women and children. How many of you know when you have a lot of women and children, it affects everything you do? Do, do you know that affects war? In war, that you're influenced by, if you're with weak people, if you have weak people, When you are going to battle, it affects everything. If you are alone and you're willing to take risk, they can use the weak people against you constantly. This is real. There's nothing that hampers one of the greatest arguments against women going to war with soldiers, joining the army, fighting, running, actually going in operations. Forget the movies. That's just nonsense. The greatest problem, they know it. Army commanders know it everywhere that a female compromises the whole mission. Who, well, which female cannot understand? You're like, why? Because instead of all this group of men, 100% going after the mission, fire, forward. You see them gather around the female. Total distraction. Because of that one female, the whole mission can be, can fail. Their natural instinct, instinct to protect. You know, no matter what the confused of the world say about how we are the same, we are the same. Something inside males, no. They can pass. Two men are fighting. People just walk past. They pass. They see a man touch a woman. It's pure strangers who stop and intervene. Yes, no? Everywhere on earth, it is the same. Something inside, in spite of the nonsense being spouted, something inside. They pass, they see a man change a tire. Everybody passes. They pass, you see a woman start looking at the tire. She's not even changing, she's just looking. All sorts of people are stopping. Madam, you need help. Do you have 10 heads? Why do you think it's so? Because no matter the nonsense people talk, inside us is common sense. 
we know what God, how God made things to be. No matter what silliness the girl herself is talking. I can get it. Shut up. Stand behind me. Okay, okay, stop. Woman. Don't need any max. Be careful what you say. I think someone has said that here. Note it down. Go back and repent. Ask God to forgive you. Take away that curse you put over your life. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. You said with your mouth, I don't need any man. If it goes the way I'm saying it, you never marry. That's one. Two, male help will move away from me. So you're going to open your mouth and ask, Father, forgive me. What I said before, I say, Lord, I need men. Not even just them. I've given you how to go and rectify your error. Don't harm, I don't want to tell you to stand up or anything. Don't harm yourself. Don't harm. You have already harmed. Tell you how Satan fights. All he gets you to do is say something. Why do you think you go through difficulty? All Satan wants is as you go through that difficulty, you open your mouth and say something. As you say it, it is noted down. Satan has what he wants. He needed. After that, it's over. Many times, after you said that thing, the trouble ended. That's all he wanted. He wanted you, he wanted you so offended till you spoke. Once you spoke, it's equivalent to signing an agreement. He has it. Words. The Bible says life and death, the book of Proverbs, are in the power of the tongue. Those who love it will eat the fruit. <laughs> words are spirit and life and death. Jesus said my words are spirit and life, but words are life and death. A little fire is commenced in James 3 by the tongue. And it says it consumes the whole forest. He said it sets the whole world on fire. This. And you're busy there saying witch. Witch. Uh, witches. Uh, witchcraft. No, if you find out who cast that spell on you, you won't believe it. It's you. We saw your picture in the database. It was you. Eh, I didn't know what I was saying now. Did you say it? I was only 13. Did you say it? You said it. You were 13 and you cursed yourself. Nobody said there's a law. There is only 50-year-old people's curses that work. You cursed yourself with your own mouth. You uttered the words. You've, one of the greatest things we've seen God do when God is helping people in different seasons, how you know what's important. Some of you think, no, but an anointed man of God can just remove it. Let me tell you my experiences. The primary thing I've seen God do to change people's lives is to make them remember things. So I say something like this and I say, everyone stand up, let's pray. I say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke every evil speaker. I, I pray it. The major thing you see people say, if they come to see me, they say, as you were praying or when I went to him, as I was sleeping, I had a dream and remembered I must have been around so, so, and so. And I was, I was standing with my older brother and they were shouting at me again. And I said, I hate, I, the number one thing I've seen God do, the Holy Spirit do, is remind people of things they uttered with their own lips that put them into the bondage they are in. Instead of looking for your magic solutions, why does God remind you? So you can say, Lord, forgive me for this thing. I renounce it. Then he can answer you. If you know anything about the court process. So the average person wants, your attitude is first, the average Christian. There is no courtroom at all. There is no case. There is nothing. It's just you and your life. But reality is that there is a court case. Reality is that before the judge of the whole earth are accusations from the accuser of the brethren. These accusations will be backed up with evidence you created. Sometimes you didn't create it directly. Some your, if he can even bring what your grandparents did, 
He even brings what your whole tribe did. He brings things you have never done personally. He brings. He moves a suit, a motion against you. This is normal. He's doing this worldwide. So even after, you know, maybe there's a court, you don't realize what is before the court. What you see in your own court, in your brain, is the Lord God sitting as a judge. Then you make a request. That's not how a court is. In a court, there's two sides. Always. That side may not be represented, but it exists. Maybe the other side did not hear and come. You better be aware that there's the side. Revelation 12, verse, chapter 12, tells you that the accuser of the brethren, Satan, the serpent, the dragon, he accuses brethren day and night. He tells you how often he accuses. Revelation chapter 12, verse 10. If he's accusing day and night, it must be useful. If it was useless, why is he doing it? So what the Lord does, the Holy Spirit does for you, is to come and teach you how to fight the case. He tells you things. He said, when you go, first, you have to acknowledge that there was that other thing you did. Remember, open your mouth and appeal to the court and say, my Lord, I acknowledge that I said those things. I was foolish and ignorant. I pray the court, according to your word, if I confess my sins, I acknowledge my sins. You are faithful and just to forgive me my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Please, forgive this sin by the blood of your Holy Son. See, you have put the law before the, his face. He said if you acknowledge. But you see, you couldn't acknowledge it before because you didn't even re know you had done anything. So Satan was accusing you based on a fact. You didn't remember. You, so you didn't even ask for forgiveness. Who tells someone to forgive them for what they have not done? Can I come to you and say, forgive me for how much I'm, for, for that 30,000 I'm owing you? Yeah, because I don't owe you a dime. But if I'm owing you and didn't know, didn't know that when you rented that house that we are living in, you paid 120,000, there were three of us, and you said, you know what, I'll pay 60. The two of you paid 30, 30. That was the condition. You gave me in the agreement when I came. I took it. I didn't read it. I threw it and kept. That was four months ago. You came and said, no, you travel. Then you said, you sent me a message saying, please, can you send me the 30,000? I say, what are you talking about? Oh, God, I'll block your number. It's like you're a Yahoo now. You see, I'm unaware of my debts to you. And he could show up with a policeman. He has a right. I signed, the I signed that document. I didn't read it. I am owing him. That you don't know is your bad luck. They go before the court. He succeeds against you once they are before the court. Satan is bringing cases successfully every day. Or he wouldn't still be in court day and night. Because ignorant Christians are saying, no, no, <laughs> no, it's under the blood, no. No, once you become a Christian, no, there's no accusation. Then why do you come to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace in times of need? This is a time of need. Why do you come? In your mind, you just come to beg for things because you do not see that the throne of God is a courtroom. When you say the throne room, what are you thinking? We come. I don't know anything about throne room. I'm going to compose my honor. With that. I don't like it. Stop, stop. I don't like it. 
give me another one. Oh, something older. They don't whine and sing anything. CC. There's nothing about the throne. Let me form mount now. I said, let me form mount. You people now say you want to see. Don't we have a song about throne? The one upon the throne says now. Let mercy now be shown. The one upon the throne says now. Now, if you know how that song was composed, if you listen to the wordings, if you haven't heard it go online, you see it. The one on the throne says no. It was a Friday when we used to have all-night meetings. It was a prayer meeting before the all-night. That's for the visitors. So I would have a meeting, what, five to seven or eight. Then we go for the all-night. I'll go for the all-night by 10, 9, 10. But it was the end of such a meeting, and I felt the Lord was, was wanting to release people. That was the closing prayer of that meeting, actually. That song was a, a, a closing prayer. And as I was speaking, I said, Mercy will now show the one upon the throne says no. Let mercy flow. The one upon the throne says no to darkness as it was before. So it won't be as it was before. The one upon the throne says no. And it will now show the one upon the throne says no. See, if you understand that the one on the throne is a judge, and why he's saying no, is no to darkness, to wickedness, to all that. He's saying no. Why? They were bringing a case, and he was, nope, no, no. I strike out your case. I'm saying no. There are situations far more than you can imagine where the one on the throne says yes. If you know. I like to stress these things because most people will find, understand what we are discussing when they die. It's in the ages to come that the average human being would think these things through. They don't think about it at all. They cannot see. That, they, that's what blindness is. That's why I'm always praying for eyes to see. And yes, yes, so you can understand. When you see, you'll be different. You won't be ridiculous. No, don't worry now. If it happens, I'll just pray. You may get a no. The accuser may succeed. And he has succeeded far more times than you care to know. Listen, the book of Job tells you about the accuser succeeding. And Job was innocent. Jesus tells Peter, Satan has asked to sift you. I've prayed for you. The accuser succeeded. He made an appeal. The Bible, Jesus said it clearly. He said he has petitioned. Because that's what Satan does. He petitions. He asks the court. We ask the court. We pray the court. And it was granted that they be sifted. Why? In your false Christianity version. God can never do that. Read your Bible. He does. Look on the whole earth. There's no one like Job. A man of integrity. Without, give me Job one. Look at God's description of Job. Have you considered my servant? Say servant of God. He was a servant of God, Job. For there is no one on earth like him, a man who is what? Blameless and upright, who fears God and shuns evil. I have a question to ask you. Are you blameless and upright? Do you fear God and shun evil? I'm just hinting to you that likely Job is a better person than you. And he was not just a child of God, he was a servant of God. Look at this fellow. Do you know what it means to be blameless? When the Bible tells you Zechariah and Elizabeth were blameless, they came to a, 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 an old woman and put a baby in her womb and made an old man able to pro, uh, 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 produce progeny. That's what blamelessness creates. When they say someone was is blameless, are you blameless? This man was blameless and upright. There's no one, there was no one on earth as correct as this guy. Satan brought an application and said, if you remove the fence from around him, you see he'll deny you. And it was granted. 
I ask you again. Have you, have you read your Bible recently and looked at yourself recently? So with which boldness you walk around and say the devil cannot? Stop listening to fake pastors. They will harm you. Now, they may not be fake pastors, but ignorant pastors and teachers. They will stand in front of you and make you all sorts of promises. Some of this American brand Christianity that says, you know, it's very popular. It's been popular in Nigeria for decades. So it's not American. I'm just saying that a lot of it comes from a culture that likes to say things that, you know, God doesn't want anyone to suffer. If you ever see suffering, the Lord has no hand in it. Meanwhile, all you have to do is pick your New Testament. Start from Acts of the Apostles after the cross in case you have a problem with Jesus. Because most Christians have a problem with Jesus. Yes, if I said start with Matthew, you meet Jesus. You know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus is everywhere. And some of you have people tell lies. The average, most Christians have an absolute problem with Jesus. Cannot be listening to Jesus. Anything he said was before the cross. So we've trashed it. Once he died, thank God, he canceled out everything he said. What nonsense. He said his words. Even the law of Moses that you've trashed. He said not one jot or tittle will disappear till heaven and earth pass. He told you when the law will lapse. When heaven and earth passes, you... No, that's not for you. It's not your portion. So the ignorant party continues. So we even trash Jesus. Okay, so let me join you and drop Jesus and go with Acts of the Apostle down. Go and type in the word suffer and see how many times it occurs. Look at the word suffer. See how many times Christians are told that they will suffer for righteousness. And you conclude, they came up with a sermon that says, you know, I had a woman of God. I was quite, I felt quite sad. I, I don't know. I felt sad because I've told her story for years. As a young lady, she left America, 18 years old or less, went to America, uh, Kenya, stayed there, did the will of God. God moved mightily. A course was broken over a land that had not had rain properly for, I don't know, 200 years. I don't know how long. Very long period, 100 years. Very long period. They were under a course. That course was broken. It began to rain. Change occurred in that place. Many good things happened. There was transformation. And Satan tried to kill her. Miracles happened. The Lord Jesus, in a vision, showed up, restored her internal organs, and she was alive again. All kinds of things happened. She has a story of paying a price. Left America to Africa to suffer. And I'm hearing her <laughs> some years ago, Jennifer Toledo, and she's preaching, and, and she's talking about suffering, how God does not cause suffering. So now she's in her 30s, I guess. Back then she was in her, she was less, or 18 or so. And I'm feeling very bad. Like what she's saying. What, what's it? This is someone that's actually suffered. This is not one that just grew up in church. And you, this is where you ended. That God does not cause suffering. The Bible couldn't be clearer in Hebrews chapter 12. That the one whom the Lord loves. He disciplines. It tells you clearly that he causes you pain to bring gain. He said, if you don't suffer, that you are, are illegitimate, child. How can you be disciplined and it's not painful? Go down to verse 14, 13 and 14. What? No, 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 no. No, go back to uh, 11. Yes, read. No discipline seems enjoyable at the time, but painful. Stop. For those that, as I was saying, discipline, you said, no, discipline does not have to be painful. Which Bible do you use? Because that's how people go in and put, you, 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 you read like a blind person. You read one line, you jump the rest. Have you seen that all discipline is painful? Huh? Give me, give us King James. Read again. Now, no chastening for the present seemed to be joyous, but grievous. 
Nevertheless, afterward, it yielded the peaceable... Say afterward. Afterward. When does it yield anything? Afterward. You want to know God. You can't endure anything. You will not know God. Don't bother. Ah, I want understanding of the word. Okay. Are you ready to sit with it for two hours every day? In between your busy schedule? I know two hours is a bit long. I'll do 10 minutes. Okay, 15. Clown. Where's your costume? <laughs> Don't bother. Don't bother. Oh, I want to hear God. You want to hear God? Yes. How are you going to do that? Is it while playing candy? That crushes? Huh? Is it while candy is crushing you? Or you're crushing after candy? Is it why you're not for four hours? No, God forbid, it's not four hours. Have you ever calculated? Ever? Have you ever calculated? Go and look at the time. When I made our people calculate, they realized it was on average five hours. 2017. I told our people, have you checked how much time you spend playing games? Look, they started looking. Average, minimum, five hours a day. That's how they became Christians here. Yeah. Born again Christians got born again here, again. Because I told them, get rid of those games. Delete, delete, delete. They obeyed. The ones who obeyed, they grew. Fu, 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 fu. Suddenly, the people that they met, that they used to look up to as spiritual, they had overtaken. Some people were so jealous, they looked at some and said, this your Christianity is not real. Nobody grows this fast. It will fail. We are still here. It has not fell. This, then it was two months, nine, six years. It has not fell. There's a price to pay. I repeat, there's a price to pay. You're not willing to pay. You're going to keep this super distractions. Get rid of that Facebook. That's why you, till today, you go online. There's a struggle. Our people struggle to do online things that involve Facebook, Instagram, or any of that. Even when we start putting out things on those channels and say spread it, we don't. I don't push it too hard with our people because they are not on it. They are left it in 2, 16, 17, 18. They are left it. They are shut down accounts. People have walked away from that because of the amount of distraction. And it's far worse now. I don't know how I stopped what I opened the other day. What was it? Facebook link? What? Something. Every other app I know, when you press back, it goes and exits, have you? Who has noticed that when you can't go out of Facebook with the back button? Is it, is it my phone? Devil walk. I, I went like, okay, I know Instagram does, is it three times? All of them are abnormal. They, they don't, Every other app works normally. Hey, they don't work. Instagram, TikTok, all those guys don't work normally. And you've noticed? When you when other things, one step, one next, he may ask you the second, you ask immediately, do you want to exit? They are on once, twice, maybe the third time. Then you now say, do you want to exit? Then it has to be four or five times. Then this Facebook one, it refused completely. It did not go back. I had to minimize, open, then open, then slide it out of existence. And you know it's purposeful, right? You know they set up the algorithms to do that. You thought it's a mistake? <laughs> you haven't heard how TikTok exploded. I told you some of it. It's a Chinese-owned business. They know exactly. How many of you know it's many times you stay? You went to reading something. That it's because we're trying to leave. That's when they grabbed you. That it goes back to a place where, see, listen, this is me. I've come to where some of you room. You're pretending you don't know the area. Listen, before I come after you personally, if I'm asking you questions of things you're guilty of almost daily, be nodding vigorously. Don't do that thing you're doing. Don't act like, well, you know, we are not really into, you know, so, well, you are the one that strayed. I don't know why you strayed. We are praying forgiveness for you. 
hippo hippo something you I, and I, like, these people are devil. It is on your way out. That's where they grab you again. You open one thing, it opens to it. On your way out, they lock the door. That's when you start looking around. That's where they snagged you. That's where it's 30 minutes later. You say, dear God. Yes, no. Oh, God. Some, your data alert. Some, one hour later. Some, you look at the clock. It's 2 a.m. Tanan, Tanan, what's that sound? Jesus, Tanan, something you just said. Let me read this post link someone sent me. That's how they imprisoned you for three hours. All over the earth, they are doing this. That's pure Satan. So the best thing for most people to do if you if you are hoping to go far, so my words don't keep sounding to you like, well, I know what is preaching. It sounds true, but 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 what? Your brain is full of Facebook. You better delete it. Delete it first. Delete it for two years. You survive. You find out you survive. Delete the app. Delete the messenger. Nobody needs it. Who needs Facebook Messenger? You don't need it. Don't you have WhatsApp? If you don't have WhatsApp, eh, that's where you have a problem. You don't need that Messenger. You leave it there. Keep saying, no, don't worry. I know what I'm doing. Uh, you know, I, I laugh at you. I've seen them. They're in final year. I want to be serious now. You want to be, you want to be serious now? Oh, finally, in your final, hey, yeah. It's just because of the love of Christ. I've been getting salt and rubbing it in. I think I need salt. I'll rub it in. Say, oh, you'll be serious now. Don't. I will, I, I will do you many things. You'll be serious now. You'll be serious now. You're on your way out. You'll now be serious. You lost two years. You wasted two years. Have you ever been involved in one deliverance session? No. Where I saw it, I saw it that time you were. Have you laid hands on anyone? They got baptized in the Holy Spirit? No. Have you taught Bible classes? Have you taught the believers Bible school to any sort? No, I, I, I just joined the... You squandered three years. You're coming to your senses now. You keep squandering time. Coming to your senses later. Next thing, you, you have a job. Next thing, you'll be married. Then you start telling stories about God knows. It's because you have not spoken to married people. It's because you have not met married people. That's why you say later. No wise person plans anything for later. Everything is now, now, now is the time. Life ain't easy, child of God. Life ain't easy. Believe it. The river is flowing for all of us. You're meant to walk into it. Ezekiel 47, that song talks about the water going from one level to another. No chastening is, go back to PSB, is joyous. Verse 11. No discipline seems enjoyable at the time, but painful. And every child that is not disciplined is not a real child. It's painful. This is why we turn back. This is why we don't fight battles. This is why the, your business doesn't prosper. You refuse pain. What did you give up? What did you give up? What did I give up to read my Bible in 1999? TV. That my father was made a commissioner. New house. Like government house. They were housing. A commissioner can afford a little more. Even if it's just his wife buying the things and not using 
You see, not needing to contribute her money towards food so much again. That's something. That's a better generator, possibly. That's a few things, okay? So my dad was a rector of a, a college of agri. What do you call Aksu in back here? Orogona. He was the first. He had the ones that, you know, so he was, was a rector. Before that, or then he began a commission. So comfort levels have the ability to rise. As a student, so you could go from asking for maybe two, five to asking for three. three not that I ever defrauded my parents, but you could, you could get more. You could go from not buying textbooks to buying textbooks. I need textbooks. I need 15,000 naira for textbooks. Maybe before that, you didn't bother with textbooks because only the ones that are compulsory handouts and you, you borrowed and you, you could survive library books. So you can do more. So there's more electricity where you're staying and all that. So that means there's more TV and I like TV. They say when I was small, two, three years old, they come and find me. We were outside the country at the time. They come out in the morning, six o'clock, I'm in front of the TV. They come and see me. One small human being like this, 6 a.m. is, I'm watching whatever, Incredible Hawker. But the Bible is saying, Bia, Bia, Bia. TV is saying, Bia. You're hearing the laughter from the parlor. Family is <laughs> <laughs> it's your father's house and you're up in the room alone there's a price to pay it's not theory there's a price to pay there's a price to pay you're lucky they don't harass you my family is wonderful it didn't disturb me so much. You think you won't feel it? You feel it too. Where is everybody? Ah, they finished eating. Where are they? They are relaxing in the parlor. Where are you? You're going upstairs. You know the feeling of standing up from a group of enjoyable conversation? Who has ever experienced it? Is it hard? Yeah. That thing is hard. Then you do it repeatedly. You do it till you die. You're dead. You drag yourself away. That was my life in there. I told you, I, I'm not telling you the Sunday afternoon pounded yam and chicken version. That's 1998, 99. Upstairs, after church meeting. I'm telling you the 2001, 2, 3 version. The other things. You go up to your room. You close the door. Everybody knows. I'm not hanging around the kitchen. I say, you know, I'm waiting on the Lord. Nobody should disturb me. No. Because you don't want to be disturbed. No matter what I believed about fasting, I'll still leave. So no food for me. I'm up there. I'm away from everything. So nobody will say, come first. Come. You go and pray. Don't worry. Come. Just do this. Why would they not call you when your throat controls your kitchen? Just a little something, just a little something. Once that gist, food gist starts, once you've made yourself common and available, they've seen you, you've removed all the, the grace and glory of, of the one who seeketh the Lord. If you had just gone, as you came back from church, you didn't relax and pull off your shoe and join the gist about what happened today. If you had been able to pay the price of going straight to your room, now, many of you, you're hearing this. Here's your opportunity. Some of you are in the university. Perfect. It's even better. You're away from home. That's the easiest time to know God. Away from home. Where they, you know, in the house, another word for home is see finish. Let me teach you something. See finish. And your own is not even spiritual. It's literal. Since you're small, they're baiting you naked. Or were you wearing clothes? The sea finish of the house is total. Do you know the price you must pay to receive honor from people that have, are they children here, cover their ears? Seed you finish. Eh? 
People that have seen you finish. They have finished seeing you. You go and be forming spiritual. Eh? House is the hardest place to be spiritual. Because they don't see you finish. So it's the price to pay. Ah, that's why you must die, huh? You know, you communicate it clearly. I, 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 I'm fasting. And then go away. Don't fast in between. Come and hey, mommy, hey, what was that? Hey, mommy said, but what? Get out. If there's a tree, climb it. There's no space. There's a primary school there. Leave. Go and stay there. Don't carry your phone. Don't be crazy. We didn't have phones. Thank you, Jesus. You have phones. God have mercy on you. Don't carry the phone. Never carry of the phone. Keep it at home. Get out of the house. Primary school. You sit there with your Bible, your notebook. It's not for this. It's not for making friends. You know it will get dark. So hurry. Study. When it gets darker, you can be praying. You have heard the word of God. Then you talk to the Lord. And then you head home. If the spirit is on you strong, this place is not so safe. You go home, enter your room straight. Pass your mother. Enter the room. Be there. Spirit is... Because you couldn't stay in the prime school till late, but you can go. Go home. The beginning will be harder than you can imagine. But later on, it yields a harvest of righteousness and peace to those who have been trained by Some of you, when you hear discipline, you think it's God flogging you. No, I just gave you a perfect example of discipline. No discipline. The discipline of waiting on the Lord is not enjoyable. It's painful. It's painful. It's painful. If you endure it, child, child of God, you will come out happy, happy in the Lord. And one day you're going to stand and say, ha, God did it for me.